you know, we, we have a plan and we believe that, that we are walking in the way that God would have us to go. And for me and the direction of Emmanuel, that we had moved, we had, we had already secured the property at the north location, we had relocated, we had already entered into an agreement with another ministry who was going to take control of this building. They had actually moved into this building and purchased it, uh, moving toward that. Then two weeks after Emmanuel moved, this facility caught fire. And after it caught fire, then that changed the whole plan of what was the new ministry, what they were going to do. And the place was severely damaged. Uh, all that wasn't damaged by flame were was damaged by smoke and water and and all of those kinds of things. So we just had to go through this renovation process, but it changed the course in which we were going down. God had another plan, and so here we are now as a result of that fire because the direction was changed as us selling the building, as what we were going to do with that. Instead, Emmanuel is still in possession of this location. Well, and, and when you think about it, as Pastor Thompson said, the whole thing has changed. I mean, it has totally evolved into a whole new building. I mean, a whole new worship experience. I mean, from the carpet to HVAC to lighting to classrooms. I mean, everything is just is perfect. And it is a great place to begin a, a new church, you know, and to expand it. And in any uh, church endeavor, buildings are important and the conditions of the building are important and because this building models the excellence of Emmanuel North it just sets the stage for us to be able to reach a, a, a variety of people that are here and it invites people to come and see what used to be and what now is both naturally and spiritually. So Pastor Johnson can you take us on a tour of the building? Absolutely let's go now. This room served multi-purposes before. This was known as the gallery, the art gallery. We had various artwork up in here. It also served as an overflow for um, the worship Sunday when we would have uh, worshipers that exceeded the capacity of the sanctuary. They were seated in here, viewing on a monitor, and it also served as an additional academic class space by a biblical study uh, instruction. So it serves several purposes prior to us moving. Pastor Thompson has already said, you know, this room has served multi-purposes, and, and it will again, but as we start, this will be the place where we will pray together. So this will serve as a, as, as a prayer room for uh, the leadership, for members, we want to create a house of prayer here. So this will be the beginning stages of this room will be used for prayer. Now, what was this spot used for? This was the fellowship hall. This is where we gathered during our fellowships, during for also large meetings that exceeded the capacity of uh, the other smaller areas. And this was the place that we would come together in here. But this was also the place that the fire centered on. This was the majority of the fire damage. This area was totally destroyed uh, by, again, either fire, uh, water, and smoke damage. It's off the kitchen area. And so this is actually where the fire consumed this area. It was just destroyed. And uh, as you can see, there was just a renovation that took place in this area. Well, it would be the same. We would, we would use this for, uh, for fellowship, for large meetings, uh, just gatherings of types that, you know, if there's a place where we wouldn't use in the worship area, <clears throat> we had smaller meetings, uh, possibly Bible studies, you know, right now, instead of using the main auditorium, we would be using uh, this area for that. Now we'll move down to the classroom areas. This is one of our classrooms. 
This is a place originally, this was a youth classroom. This is where the kids would gather and receive instructions in, in one of these rooms and they did their artwork and all kinds of a youth activity that supported the youth of Emmanuel. So with that, now let's go down the hallway and you can see other areas as we continue through the building. <clears throat> This was the chapel. This was where we would gather in smaller worship areas and smaller worship groups and also instruction in here was full-fledged. It was also an overflow as I spoke of the other area. There were monitors in here that people would gather and they could uh, be a part of the worship service as it was carrying on in the main auditorium. This room has actually changed from its original purpose. For us, this was kind of a storage for our robes, for the choir, uh, all kind of media support, and fine arts ministry. But as you can see, it's going to be a youth area. Yes, this is going to be our, this is our first uh, classroom. We're expecting uh, young children here first, and so we wanted to set up at least one room. Eventually, we want to have every room furnished. You know, down here, we want to do children's ministry that would include puppet ministry. Uh, we want to do full-fledged youth ministry, and just many things that could take place down here that deals with uh, uh, Christian instruction as well as social instruction. So this is our very first classroom. This is our very first start, and we're looking forward to having our first group of children learn something about Jesus right here. And here, as we come into the main entrance, the main entrance as we go into the sanctuary, this is where we enter in. This is where, as we come as worshipers, as visitors, we begin to receive the message of Emmanuel, of who Emmanuel is, the Emmanuel experience of now of reaching the community and all of the people and the, and, and the concerns that we believe Emmanuel is being called to. But it begins here. You notice, welcome to the Emmanuel experience. And here we believe God will begin to speak to the hearts and minds of his people. Now as we enter into the main sanctuary, this is where, again, this area was, to again, totally destroyed by smoke damage and, and flames and heat really got to this area. So everything was redone, renovation took place. This is, though, the history of the place where worship, can you imagine all of the years of prayer and worship and, and preaching to God has taken place within these walls at this location. And we look forward to continuing that legacy. That's the exciting thing about being able to come here. And for me, who have not been a member of Emmanuel, but now a new member and now having the privilege of being the South Campus pastor under the leadership of Pastor Cleveland A. Thompson, what an exciting experience. And I'm looking forward to watching what God does because I know that he's not done. He's going to continue to allow that worship to go to another level. And just like this building was on fire in the natural, I believe it will be on fire in the spirit. And that it will cause people from this community and the city and from around the state to come and experience Emmanuel, which is God with us. And that's what's exciting about being here. So, Pastor Johnson, what's going to happen on this the weekend of the, the, the grand reopening of Emmanuel South Campus? Well, on that Saturday night, we're going to have an hour of prayer because, again, Pastor Thompson and myself, we're men of prayer. And, of course, Jesus said his church shall be called the house of prayer. So from 630 to 730 on the 23rd, uh, that Saturday night, we'll be having a prayer and worship service. It will be dynamic. It will be inspirational. And then on that Sunday morning, we'll have the first uh, morning service here. And then that uh, Sunday afternoon at 3.30, we will have the inaugural service here where Pastor Thompson will be sharing and giving us at the South Campus his blessing, laying out the vision, and we invite the community and everyone to come out and be a part of this historic occasion and to be a part 
of what God is getting ready to do with Emmanuel South because he is about to use us to do something to change this city and we're glad about it. So come on out and join us here for an exciting worship experience on Saturday night for the prayer service at 6.30 to 7.30 and then on Sunday morning if you don't have a church to attend and then Sunday afternoon at 3.30 we invite you to come out for a glorious time in the Lord.